Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be covering Shadow Man. Now, he made his very first appearance in Exo Man War, issue number four, that was released in May of 1992. His real name is Jack Boniface, also going by The Magpie, The Collector, and Hollow Man. And he's a mysterious New Orleans citizen that stands six feet tall and weighs 180 pounds also having brown eyes and black hair. Now, I say mysterious, but he's actually just a rare, dark, heroic figure. He has somewhat of a symbiotic relationship with a dark, powerful entity known as the Shadow Loa, which endows him with various superhuman abilities. He actually has quite a few powers that seem to constantly evolve, but to name a few, he has extremely reduced fear, basically being known for being fearless as well as having night vision, a healing factor, low-level superhuman strength, endurance, and reflexes, and he has the ability to go between the realms of the living and the realm of the dead, which is known as the dead side. This leads me to the meat of his shadowy powers. Not only can he open up gates to go between dimensions, he also has a mastery of umbrakinesis, and so he can also use the shadows themselves to teleport from one place to another. He can also manifest umbrakinetic constructs, being able to manipulate shadows to actually bind opponents as well as create weapons such as his scythe. Matter of fact, this ability of his is so powerful that he can actually create beings such as a murder of crows, all just using the darkness, which he has said multiple times he's always just felt more comfortable in the dark. To go on, Shadow Man also has a degree of reign over the dead side, being able to summon and manipulate many undead beings as well as other monstrous beings from the dead side, at times being able to literally assume control of these beings. So yeah, if this guy is your enemy, you have a lot of reasons to be afraid of the dark. Now, Jack Boniface was actually just one of a line of individuals in his family to carry the title of Shadow Man. Before he acquired his powers, he actually worked as a sort of curator for the La Nouvelle Orleans Museum of Culture. But after a series of events that led to him removing a talisman that his father had given him, which unbeknownst to Jack actually protected him from evil spirits, he'd be thrown into a world of evil creatures and spirits. This is when the Shadow Loa would activate to actually protect Jack, and it would imbue him with his various superhuman powers. And before you know it, he was getting help and guidance from the abettors named Dox and Alyssa Miles. Now, Jack, as Shadow Man, was fighting evil all over New Orleans and beyond. We'd soon see him working with the abettors to battle against the necromancer known as Master Dark, who was definitely a big bad of the Shadow Man universe. Our shadowy hero would actually be tricked by Master Dark to serve him in the dead side as a menacing figure known as the Magpie. But ironically, after a time of servitude, we learned that Jack was actually tricked and his blue bindings were only psychosomatic, meaning that he could have left at any time. Either way, he would eventually be freed from the dead side by Ninjack and Punk Mambo. We'd see Jack eventually make his way back to the world of the living, being rescued from his dazed state by his old friend, Alyssa. The two would quickly begin to investigate the Shadow Loa itself to try to figure out its true nature and hopefully be able to free Jack from its influence. But this investigation would lead them to the bad side of the powerful Loa named Baron Samedi. And the ensuing battle with Baron and his minions would ultimately lead to Jack's death. However, it should come as no surprise that death wasn't the end for the Shadow Man. At this time, instead of his spirit going into the afterlife, it would slip back in time and attach itself to other people who wielded the Shadow Loa throughout history. He would then observe the adventures of his great-grandfather, Maxim Boniface, during the 1940s, and then those of Marius Boniface, the seemingly first Shadow Man. But Jack's spirit continued to just fall back in time, with it eventually attaching itself onto someone called Standing Wolf, who was a tribal warrior in prehistoric Africa. Jack would realize that this was his ancient ancestor who actually made a pact with the Loa to save his tribe. And so he was actually the first one to become a real shadow man. 
After learning this new information, his spirit would be sucked back into the present, with him awaking after his own funeral, but now being armed with the knowledge of how far back his legacy goes. He was now a little more comfortable with his role as the Shadow Man, and would go on fighting evil wherever it reared its ugly head. We'd even get a glimpse of him in the dark, twisted timeline of Divinity 3 Stalinverse. Here, we'd see him use all of his dark powers to actually hold off the invading Soviet army for a while, with his resistance only beginning to falter after the Russian superheroes got involved. Thankfully, he was saved from this warped reality after Divinity himself would return the world to normal. But any way you cut it, Shadow Man is one of those rare figures that is powerful and uses his dark abilities for good. Now, for his powers and abilities, and his influence on the Valiant universe, for my 1 to 10 rating, I'll give Shadow Man a rating of 8, which is an unforgettable rating. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join the new Sage.